All right. Welcome, everybody, to Go In 5 Minutes, episode number 32. So today we are going to be talking about advanced usages of the NetHttp standard library package. Uh, now, there's a ton to do with this package, so we're only going to be talking about two main things. Um, but this comes from uh, epi- uh, excuse me, issue number 26. Um, so this is just a reminder, if you've got something you'd like to see, uh, go into the issues in the Go in 5 Minutes repository and uh, take a look to see if what you want is in there. And if not, uh, please submit an issue. Uh, also, uh, head over to this link here. Uh, to subscribe to the mailing list. Uh, I, I post announcements for new screencasts uh, on the mailing list and uh, nothing else. Um, I won't post, I won't sell your email address. Uh, the only other things I post are uh, announcements related to new screencasts. Um, otherwise, no marketing mails, um, nothing from other people, and so on. So with that, uh, let's go into the code. So we're going to head over to our main function uh, and we're just going to talk about, first of all, what is beyond just simple HTTP request and response. Uh, So you'll probably be familiar with this. This is just standard library stuff. Uh, We create a new servmux for our server. Uh, We handle two routes, flush and client. So we're going to check out flush first. Flush is a standard HTTP handler func, um, but Flush is a little bit different here. You can see we're not doing any work before we write our header. Uh, So we're writing down a status OK, and we're setting a new content type you might not be familiar with. This is an event stream content type, um, and this tells curl uh, and some other clients uh, pretty much, well, many, many HTTP clients will handle this text uh, event stream content type properly. And by properly, what I mean is I want to stream data back to the client. And I'm not talking about web sockets or any fancy thing like that. I'm talking about uh, like standard HTTP streaming. Uh, this is not HTTP 2. This is HTTP 1.1 uh, standard streaming. So uh, you can see here we are after writing the header, we are type asserting our HTTP response writer to an HTTP flusher. So I encourage you to go check out the docs for this. Um, However, the docs are a little bit uh, unclear how you actually get an HTTP flusher. Uh, So this is how. Now, depending on the Go server, this HTTP response writer will not always implement flusher. So that's why you have to type assert it. So you want to always make sure to have this second parameter called OK, um, just kind of the de facto uh, standard best practice uh, to call this OK. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with type assertion, what this is is you're going to try to assert the response writer to a flusher. Um, you'll get an actual flusher in the flsh variable here, but you'll also get uh, false for this OK if it couldn't be type asserted. So if this okay is false, you want to bail out because A, we can't really do anything because we can't flush. Um, We can't flush data back to the client. And also FLSH will be zero, excuse me, nil. So last piece here, um, we're going to start streaming data. So we're just streaming integers, uh, well, strings with the integer in it. Um, so we're going to just go from zero to nine. Um, we are log We're putting together our string. We're logging stuff. This is the magic here, these two lines. Um, so we're writing to our writer. Uh, we're writing that string down to our writer. Um, then we are flushing. So this means, uh, this means we are basically taking the data we just wrote to the flusher. Uh, or in other words, we wrote to the response writer, then we are flushing it down to the client and then we're going to just sleep for a second before we go and write the next, um, the next string down. So really important to remember, you write the data to the response writer, but then you flush it to the client using the flusher. Okay, so that is the first half of our server. Second half, 
I'm going back to main, you can see we've got this client. So client takes in a context.background, uh, takes in a context, and it takes in an HTTP client. So going over to client, what this does is it tries to make a request out from our server to somewhere else. Um, so the reason it takes in context and a client is because we're going to be doing HTTP requests uh, using a context in order to give us timeouts. Um, we could also use a context to give us cancellations as well. So the timeout is being fetched from the query string. I won't go into this code much. Um, you may be familiar with how to get query string data out using our url.query.get function. Um, but if not, I encourage you to go check out the docs for this. You can go kind of put this together. Uh, I've got other stuff to cover here. So we're going to go down the list of code here. Uh, we're getting our timeout from the query string there. We are then creating a context with that timeout. You can see context.withTimeout returns a new context, and that's based on the old context that got passed in to the client from up here. Um, and it gets a new client, uh, excuse me, a new context with that timeout and a function that allows you to cancel the context. Now that's important because you do have a context that'll time out, but you need to still cancel it because there are background resources that are in play when this context is alive. So you want to cancel it to resolve those, re uh, well, I guess I should call it to um, release those resources, no matter what, even if the context has already timed out. So you want to always defer cancel this. Okay, now we've got our main event, request with context. So you're going to pass the context in right here as the first parameter. And then you've got the rest that you're familiar with when you do request. So we've got the HTTP method, we've got the URL, and then we've got the body. So it's a get request, so there's no body. Okay, we've got our standard error check here uh, on line 45 to 49. And then we've got our standard HTTP client dot do function. Okay, so everything after this point on line 44 is the same that you'd be familiar with with a standard HTTP request. The difference is that we can control the inner workings of the HTTP request using our context. So it's, it's kind of delegating the responsibility of timing out or canceling our HTTP request. Okay, now we're gonna see this in action. We're gonna actually see the flusher and this in action. Okay, so we're gonna go in on the terminal. We're going to run using make run and then we're going to do test flush, test client fail, test client succeed, uh, and we'll see all three of these things in action. Okay, so we're going to make this a little bigger, make run. Uh, whoops, we're going to do go run. I had the wrong episode number in there. Um, and then we're going to open up a new terminal tab. And we're going to first do make test flush. All right, so We've got a transfer encoding chunked. Now that is automatically returned to us when we start flushing from the uh, Go server. And we have our flushed responses here. So you can see, uh, I actually didn't start talking about this till it was done, but you can see one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine got sent down just about once per second. You could see a little bit of sort of batching. It, I think it stopped at response one uh, and, and then that was curl sort of waiting to batch up a few more. Um, but if you see this, for example, doing it from a go client or some other client code, um, this would be coming in again, approximately one per second. Okay. So that can be really useful for, uh, streaming over connections that are not WebSocket uh, or are not HTTP two. Of course, the only drawback is you can only stream one way from the server down to the client. So you would want to pick up web sockets, uh, if you needed to do bi-directional streaming, for example. Okay, next one is we're going to do make test client fail. Okay, so by default, the client is going to have a timeout of zero. Okay, so that means that when you do, when I do make test client fail, 
it's going to try to do a request to go in five minutes.com, uh, but the timeout for that request is zero, so it will fail. Okay, and really the crux of it here is right here, we're going to be creating a timeout context with zero. So right down here, when we do the do, it's gonna immediately fail. Okay, so let's check out what that looks like. You can see failure immediately. Uh, we return the 500 internal server error. Um, oh, excuse me, going back to here. Um, the next the next step though is we are going to try to get the server to do a request to go in five minutes.com using a 15 second timeout. So go in five minutes.com is up um, and it should return way quicker than 15 seconds. Um, so we're just giving it sort of a wide berth and uh, let's see how that works. So there we go. There's all the HTTP for the Go in 5 Minutes website. Okay, so um, those are two really cool features um, and they're good to just know that they exist. Uh, the really, really important one that you'll probably use most uh, is the new request with context. Okay, so I, I shoved it into a Go server um, because I wanted to show the flushing and the client uh, in the same server. They are not necessarily related at all. So you can do this right here without dealing with any kind of HTTP flusher stuff. Um, and you'll probably find yourself using this more and more as you get used to it. So it's really good to know it exists. Uh, it's really good to manage the life cycle of an HTTP request this way. Um, and it fits really well in with your existing code that already uses context. Okay, the other one is Flusher. This one's a little bit more exotic. Uh, again, really need, really good to know that it exists, but you really need to evaluate whether uh, Flusher is right for you and also on a bigger picture, whether streaming is right for you. So just keep that in mind that it exists. Um, you may wanna go use uh, WebSocket if you wanna do bi-directional. Uh, Go HTTP servers are also HTTP2 now by default. Uh, so you may want to keep that in mind as well. Uh, HTTP2 can do some other kinds of streaming as well. Um, so again, Flusher, good to, good to know um, it exists. Uh, you may really want to evaluate whether it's necessary for you, especially if you're building um, uh, like an SDK or an API server or something like that. Okay. So that is it for today. Uh, I really encourage you to remember, uh, like I said, the request with context stuff. Uh, that'll be really useful in your code. Uh, feel free to go check out this code. Of course, it's always in the same place. Uh, GitHub slash AR slash slash go in five minutes. I'll separate it by dashes. And you'll want to go in and click on episode 32 for this. Uh, so just want to remind you again, please go check out the mailing list. Um, it's go in five minutes.com slash subscribe, uh, or you can go to gifm.dev slash subscribe, makes it a little bit easier. Um, and that's gonna be it for today. Uh, go forth and uh, get the most out of net HTTP, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.